Welcome back to Motion Pick Recap. Today we're going to recap the drama, comedy and satire movie titled, Dave. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. The US President and his wife arrive home to the White House, but immediately separate once inside. The President tells his staff to find someone that actually looks like him this time, greeting a woman called Monroe. Next, a President lookalike called Dave is promoting a hamburger chain, and a girl asks her mother if it's the President, and her mother replies she sure hopes not. Suddenly, two men in suits appear and watch him. At the White House, the President tells his staff he wants them to kill a homeless shelter program, serving food for kids. If he vetoes the decision, which he can, he will look like a prick, but he doesn't want to look like a prick, saying he wants them to look like pricks instead. Meanwhile, Dave gets to his small shop, greeting his secretary, after which he meets a crying woman who he will help, saying everyone works on a Wednesday. Next, a man called Murray tells Dave he can't hire anymore, but Dave begs him to help, and he reluctantly agrees. Dave, thanks him, and bids everyone goodbye as he leaves. He gets home singing loudly, and gets really surprised seeing two men in suits inside his house. They tell him they are from the US Secret Service, saying his country needs his help. For security purposes, they need someone to double for the president. Not long after, Dave has just got the same haircut as the president, looking just like him, and the chief of staff named Bob tells him just to wave and go to the limousine. The president is holding a speech, and Dave is getting ready. The secret service man called Dwayne is waiting with Dave in a room as the president finishes his speech. Suddenly the president enters, and is surprised to see Dave's likeness. The president tells Dave he's a very handsome man, after which he tells his staff to call him if there's a war, and leaves. Next, Dave takes the lead, followed by bodyguards and staff to exit the building. He's met with applause in the entrance, starting to wave, and turns around yelling God bless America, and is dragged out into the limousine. He laughs in the car, telling Dwayne he got carried away, expressing the president must be doing something very important. Simultaneously, the president is sleeping with Monroe in a hotel room. Suddenly, the president becomes unresponsive, and shortly after, the communications director Alan tells Bob he has got a major stroke. He tells Bob they must call the vice president, but Bob tells him they won't, and that it is his turn now. Dwayne suddenly gets a call, and then tells the chauffeur to go to the White House. Bob tells Alan they will tell the news the president got a mild stroke and will be up and around soon. Dave meets Bob and Alan in the Oval Office, telling him they think he did such a terrific job that they want to extend his service, telling him to try the presidential chair. They tell him something quite serious has happened to the president, and that they have to make sure the public feels like he is still sitting right here in his chair. Dave gets scared, asking why the vice president can't take over, and Bob tells him the vice president is mentally unstable. Dave asks if this is legal, and Alan answers by asking him back, if he got to get his mother to the hospital for some reason, would he drive through a red light? Dave replies he would, and then Alan says that, right now, the entire United States of America is in the car, sick, and he gotta get it to the hospital. He is shown where the first lady's bedroom is, and then led to his own bedroom. After having bid each other good night, Dave takes a look around his room where he will be living for a while. Alan explains to the press the president got a mild stroke, but will be back soon. Bob tells Alan they will send the vice president to Africa, dig up some dirt on him, and force him to resign, and then let Dave nominate himself as VP. Once that's done they will pretend the president gets a much more severe stroke, and he himself will become president. A doctor tells Dave it almost looks like he never had any stroke, asking if he's been exercising lately, and Dave replies with a list of things, including rock climbing, and Bob tries to sign him to stop talking. Bob and Alan are a bit worried he won't handle his job well, but Dave tells them to watch him, and he greets the staff in a much warmer way than the president has ever done. The staff is confused, and Dwayne tells them the president's fine. Bob makes him call his secretary at his real job to explain he has found a woman and will be away for some time, which she thinks is wonderful. During the following days, Dave prepares for his job as the president, all while news report on him being fine and resting, as well as that the vice president has been sent on a 12-nation African tour. They show Dave how the president holds the podium while speaking, but Dave corrects them, and makes an incredible impersonation, and both Bob and Alan are stunned by it. Dave asks if he can keep a pen he sees as a souvenir. Next, Dave meets the president's wife Ellen to go out on the White House balcony for the press. She asks who he was with that night, but Dave doesn't understand and thanks her for coming. Not realizing it's not her husband, she expresses to him in a serious manner she doesn't like his behavior, and leaves. Dave comments she hates him, and Bob and Alan replies yes in a chorus. In the following days, 
Dave gets to do presidential stuff, but seems to genuinely enjoy doing it for other people's sake, and the news comment the president has become a better man since the stroke. Alan sees him behaving differently, he seems to be good with kids, being playful, and in short has become the people's president. On TV some day later, Alan listens to the news where they discuss whether the president will stay a truly great man or return to being a zombie. One evening, Dave sees Ellen from the balcony, but runs away as she comes close to the window. Later, Dave has made a sandwich, which he shares with Dwayne who's his bodyguard. He asks Dwayne if it's true that he would take a bullet for the president, and Dwayne answers, certainly. Dave then slowly asks if he would take a bullet for him too, but gets no response. The following day, Bob storms into Alan's office, saying he's out of his mind to schedule a full day at a homeless shelter with Dave and Ellen. He then asks about the vice president, and Alan says he has dumped the first Liberty stuff they themselves almost got nailed on, on him instead. In the car, Alan asks at which point he began to care for the homeless. He says he's always cared, and looks at her leg, which she notices. They are greeted by homeless kids, and Dave is surprised they are all kids. As they are showing how the kids learn communication at the shelter, Dave sees a lonely boy in a corner and goes up to him. He asks the press not to bother them, and then asks the boy's name, which is David, and Dave says it's a great name. They have a friendly conversation, and Dave does a magic trick for him, all of which Ellen sees. Dave is making a montage of everything he's done as president, commenting Dwayne is in some photos, saying he'd probably look good in a sweater. Simultaneously, Bob is seen vetoing some decisions with the president's signature and stamp. Not long after, Ellen walks in on Dave, angrily saying she can't believe he did it, and Dave asks what he did. She demands he turns around and looks at her, and then says that the bill he vetoed would have given those children homes, but now they won't. Dave doesn't understand, but she says it's not a mistake when you veto their funding. Dave runs after, but she won't listen. He asks Dwayne to get Bob and Alan immediately. He demands an answer, asking why they vetoed the funding for that shelter. Bob then irritatedly says that if he can cut $650 million from the federal budget, he can keep those lousy shelters, and angrily leaves. Next, Murray arrives at the White House. He meets Dave in the Oval Office, saying he's in so much trouble if the government finds out, and Dave replies he's the government. Dave then asks Murray to help him cut the budget, about $650 million. He calls on his secretary, asking to get a copy of the budget, and if there's any chance they could rustle up some fresh bratwurst and hot mustard, which Murray loves. Next, Murray questions who does the books, commenting he'd be out of business if he ran his own company this way. Murray then shows Dave how they could cut $650 million from the budget. The next day, Bob is singing happily, showing Alan how the vice president is now linked to the scandal. Bob asks why there are cameras, and Alan says it's the 100th cabinet meeting. Dave enters, and says he want to cover some things in the budget. Bob protests, saying it's not on the agenda, but Dave replies it's a last-minute change to save the shelter. Dave explains he found some defense contractors that aren't delivering on time, and so asks if they could hold back their payments, put it in an interest-bearing account. They confirm they can, and Dave is glad since they will make $276 million from that. Dave then lists another thing they can cut, an ad campaign boosting consumer confidence in the auto industry, which could save them $47 million. He lists some more things, and after a while, they have managed to cut $656 million from the budget, and so can keep the shelter, and people cheer, all except Bob. A guy informs Ellen, saying she can't believe what her husband just did. Bob says he will ruin Dave, but then Alan says they will all go to jail together, threatening Bob to reveal they are behind the First Liberty stuff. That evening, Ellen walks in on Dave, and they start a conversation. She comments he did a good thing today, saying it kind of reminded her of what he did a long time ago in the state legislature. Having no idea what she means, Dave says he remembers too. She then tells him he never was in the state legislature, introducing herself as Ellen and asks who he is and where her husband is. Next, Dwayne shows them, taking the elevator far down to a restricted area. Ellen sees her husband and asks what happened. Dwayne says he got a real bad stroke, and probably won't wake up. Ellen packs her things to move back home, away from the White House. Dave enters and asks how she is going to get home, and she replies she had not thought that far. He shows her a tunnel, leading out, and says Dwayne has left them a car nearby. In the car, he asks when she first noticed he was not her husband, and she says it was on the way to the shelter when he looked at her legs. Dave says he thought it was in the shower, but she says no. Suddenly, the police stop them. They ask them to step out of their car, and as he sees them, he thinks they are the president and first lady. People start watching, 
and Dave begins explaining they are lookalikes, being hired to impersonate the president and first lady. He makes some funny impersonating acts, and people like it. After a while, one of the cops says he won't give them a ticket, and lets them go. Next, Dave has bought Ellen a special sandwich he loves himself, and she thinks it's good. She asks what he does, besides being president, and Dave explains he finds people jobs. Ellen asks what he would do if he had one more chance to be the president, and Dave answers he'd do a lot of things. As the two return to the White House, a guard is surprised to see them. The two get inside, and Ellen says he'd make a great president, after which they go to their separate rooms. The following morning, Bob is furious, storming through the White House, into the Oval Office. He tells Dave he can't call press conferences, telling him he's a nobody, and that he must ask him before doing anything. Dave then stands up, telling Bob he's fired. Furious, Bob says he can't fire him, but Dave ignores him. Ellen walks in, calling Dave darling, kissing him, and says the media is waiting for him. As they leave, Dave asks Bob to leave his resignation on his desk. Next, Dave tells the press he asked Bob, the chief of staff, to resign because he and Bob has come to believe in different things. Dave then promises his administration from today will find a job to anyone who wants one. The press laughs, but Dave continues explaining how people light up when they finally get a job, saying they look like they can fly, since a job creates self-respect. Dave then says you don't really know how much you can do until you stand up and decide to try, and everyone becomes silent before he leaves. Next, news and different senators from around the country comment they think the president's job program is great. As Dave gets to the office the next day, the vice president Nance is there, respectfully greeting him, and showing him gifts from different African countries. Nance says he knows they haven't always gotten along, which he respects, but then gets angry and asks how he could do this to him. Dave doesn't understand, and Nance tells him he surely knows he had nothing to do with the First Liberty stuff. Dave says he will fix it, which confuses Nance. Next, Alan explains to Dave what they did. Dave says it's wrong, and Alan replies he knows and is he embarrassed, but that it was Bob's idea. Simultaneously, Bob is holding a press conference, explaining he's found the president being involved in the First Liberty stuff too. Dave sees it and thinks Bob is making it all up, but Alan explains the president actually did it. Not long after, Alan advises Dave not to do what he's about to do, but Dave says they can't go into hiding now. That evening, Nance visits Dave, telling him he thinks his jobs program is a great idea. Dave asks how he got started in politics, and Nance shares his life story, saying he once was a shoe salesman. One day his wife asked him to run for office, since he had always talked about it all the time. During his lunch break the next day, he went down to the registrar of voters, and next thing he knows he's a councilman. His wife was a campaign manager, and they had a budget of $2,000, including advertising, and that was it. He asks Dave how he got started, and Dave replies, kind of the same way. Later, Dave asks Ellen if Nance is a good man, and she answers he is. Next day, news explains the president has requested a rare joint session of Congress to personally answer the allegation by Bob. Before going in, Dave tells Alan to relax and enjoy the moment. Meanwhile, Bob has invited people to his house. Dave walks up to the podium, and as he starts talking, Bob watches, and Ellen does the same. He begins by saying all charges by Bob are absolutely true, but that it's not the whole truth. Dave then picks up documents, explaining these papers prove that Bob was involved in the scandal too, and planned it as well. Dave also adds the documents show the vice president was never involved in any of it, saying Nance is innocent. Dave apologizes to the people of the United States of America for what he did, but in the middle of it, he starts stuttering, and then suddenly collapses. People are shocked and he's quickly brought to an ambulance. As they arrive at the hospital, doctors take the president into the building. Dwayne goes back into the ambulance, where Dave is. As Dave tells Dwayne to take care, Dwayne tells Dave in a genuine way he would have taken a bullet for him, and Dave smiles, after which he walks home. The news explain the president got another more serious stroke and is fully incapacitated. Nance is sworn in as the 45th president of the United States, and five months later, the president succumbs and is laid to rest at Arlington National Cemetery. Somewhere in Washington, D.C., Dave's secretary and his friend Murray are helping him in his campaign to run for office. As Dave finds a woman a job, saying everybody works on a Monday, Ellen appears. Dave walks up to her, saying she looks great. Murray looks at them weirdly, and Dave leads Ellen into his office. They start kissing, and as everybody looks at them, Dave adjusts the window blinds to get some privacy. The end. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this, and hit the like button to help us out. 
Until next time, take care.